All right, so let's talk about this. How did I get from 80 to 125 volts? Well, a lot of strange things are going on here. <laughs> As you see, I got these metal rods, actually a copper rod standing up. Copper rods in the ground a little bit. There's a copper rod right over there too. Another chair, or ottoman, or whatever you want to call it, sitting here. These are aluminum, powder coated. Let me see now. I'm going to remove this chair. Okay, we're still okay. Alright, now. Well, this ottoman here, this chair, used to be a lot closer to my coils. And it seems like uh, the farther I get away from the coils, the better. Um, let me show you this. Here's... I'm going to set that over here by our coil. See it's dropping. So that was, the chair itself was affecting the induction of the coil. Now, strange. I put a longer alligator clip in here, another one, so I could move the chair farther away. And the voltage started dropping like a rock. Why? Why would it drop like a rock if I move farther away? Or maybe it depends on this length of wire from the coil out. I don't know. There's a few strange things going on. Uh, maybe I should show you that, but yeah. I tried to move the chair farther away with the longer alligator clip. Voltage dropped like a rock. Um, the other thing is there's some sort of reaction with the circuit being near this aluminum underneath you can see this is mainly plastic here but there's still a metal frame here here and our circuit is kind of near this pole right here so um, yeah if I if I take this box with my circuit in it and I move it over an inch well here let's see we were slowly climbing back up here 125.3 okay let's move our box over to there There it goes. Give it a second. Let's see if it goes down another point. Come on. Okay, make it a liar out of me now, huh? There it goes. not much but over time that'll keep dropping down and dropping down and it really does put that back to where it was <laughs> it's gonna start going back up so so I tried 
some aluminum pieces, some copper pieces, some iron pieces, magnets. I've tried laying it all around the circuit, different areas, closer, farther, under, underneath the box. And I'm not getting really any big difference. So it's strange. See, it's going back up now. Just from moving it over an inch. <coughs> so, I figure it's got to be some kind of induction and magnetic fields uh, something with the aluminum in here um, now I originally put these here so that I would know exactly where to put this chair back but then as I did this we're kind of grounding the chair a little bit more and that raised it up a little bit more too that's why I've just got this iron rod just kind of laying against here. I don't think it's doing as much work though as those copper rods are. Now we're going to move this away. This isn't even in the ground. Those copper rods are. Let's uh, lay that down. I think we're okay without that. Okay, now I'm going to move this chair like one inch forward this way, away from these rods. We're still there. All right, hang on. I need both hands here. One second. There. There, I just moved it. It's not touching. Now, it's already went down. Yep, it's already going down. I just moved a chair one inch. It's where this is aluminum, it's powder coated got plastic caps on the bottom of the legs so maybe I gotta yeah this is I'm just thinking how anybody can replicate this bro well, you could set this look see all right so we're gonna move this back again here nice and tight up against those legs going back up so like I said we got a few things going on there I got to think of how to replicate that just put an aluminum bar underneath and make sure it's grounded maybe I could you know, if this chair was grounded a lot better, maybe we'd have better results. So, what? No, man, I don't know. I got really. I'm gonna probably be thinking about this for a week. Yeah, it's very strange. Especially that if I put a longer clip in there. Is it just having the exact right distance between this chair and the coil? It's also like fine-tuning. But then the chair underneath it being grounded. Maybe I need a rod that goes deep in the ground. Man, I don't know. This is really... I keep getting so lucky the experiments I do.
And then the other thing is, uh, I spent hours and hours an entire day trying to bring this circuit inside my lab. Uh, last year it worked fine because I didn't have these coils on there. And the wire has to go into the lab over here where you see some black tape hanging here. Oops, it's one of my wires coming from inside. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember I brought it inside and I got like five volts. <laughs> like five compared to 125. Or actually at that time I was getting 80. There's so many things at work here. Uh, this is when I brought it into the lab. This wire kind of went around and up here so it was not straight out like it is now. These little details are all making a big difference. I uh, Last year I had to use a coaxial cable coming into the lab and out and that helped but not with the coils. So then I, I tried the coaxial cable, I, I wrapped it with aluminum foil, and that didn't work, so then I wrapped a, a screen around it a couple times, and that still didn't work, and I wrapped it with the aluminum foil, a screen, and a rag, so that it's not making any contact with anything, and that still did not work. Uh, and then all of a sudden, yeah, this little thin wire actually worked better than the coaxial. But still, let me show you something. Okay, now I'm just going to touch the wire here. I'm barely touching it. Look at that, look at that. I'm just barely touching it. That's why I tell people, you cannot let your antenna wire touch a leaf on a tree or have it touching anything. Geez, that really shot down fast. I think it was already going down just from my finger being close to it. So we got some multiple things going on here. But uh, this is really good results so far, huh? Can't uh, argue with that. Uh, let's see what we could do with this now. I got to get this inside the lab somehow. Maybe, maybe, I'm hoping. <laughs> I might have to leave this out here all winter, try to cover it with plastic or something. Maybe I could just run the output wires into the lab, at least so that I could work on things the temperature is going to start changing real fast. Well, it already, it's only 50 degrees out today. Alright guys, let's see what I could do. We'll be back. Okay. My meter is gone. I got these two white wires on there for the output. They're going inside my lab. That other wire is just a ground wire that I used in experiments. It's doing nothing. It's just clipped up there, just hanging there. But we could ignore that. If they go inside. And 123.5. There's the two wires coming in. I put that rag there too, just in case it's affecting it, the pole there, because I got the 60 hertz. You know, my lights, I've showed this before, are wrapped around the poles up there. And uh, 
at frequency of 120 frequency or 60 Hertz is going through my lab so that's nothing right now that's just hanging there but anyhow it's working so we might have to work with this throughout the winter so now we got it inside so I'm really happy about that I'm not happy about leaving everything out there my circuit and everything outside <laughs> said I'll have to cover that with a plastic bag or something but we got it so now we we can work on it and inside our lab uh, we won't be able to really make many more improvements outside the lab but yeah all right I'm excited about this and uh, yeah you know the meter does act as a load I first brought these wires inside and as soon as I hooked my meter up I had over 129 volts and it went down to here so I'm like yeah so the meter is definitely acting as a load uh, somebody pointed that out in the comments thank you they said about charging the capacitor without the meter but anyhow all right uh, let's see what we could do next here